1 Corinthians 16 verse 1 Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. So Paul, he went on his missionary journeys and he passed through the Galatia area where the church of Galatia were and here we have the church of Corinth and he was saying look I instructed Galatia as I instructed you to collect for the saints because Paul needed to gather a collection to bring money to the saints that were poor in Jerusalem and his mission was to bless them with that money so he wanted them to be prepared for that and all churches we should be seeking to do charitable and good works in this world we should be trying to bless the brethren of the saints but also people outside of the church but really we should have a love for the people within the church that have need so this is an example for us that it's not just following Christ's commands um, it's not just uh, having fellowship it's not just the breaking of bread but there are other aspects to it where we as a church can make an impact to our community at large and I feel that many churches are missing those opportunities where they can actually make the difference in verse 2 upon the first day of the week let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him that there may be no gatherings when I come so on the first day the Christians were given to break and bread and meeting and here we see that they are collecting uh, wealth for Paul to come and take um, in advance so that there isn't any kind of administration that's needed it's all prepared for him it says in verse 3 and when I come whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters then will I send to bring your liberty unto Jerusalem that is their gift and so he was coming to take their gift and bring it to Jerusalem as there were very bad times persecutions going on there and there were some very poor saints indeed in verse 7 for I will not see you now by the way but I trust to tarry a while with you if the Lord permit now Corinthians would of course absolutely loved Paul and I should imagine that uh, everyone would want to have a slice of his time but Paul was very busy in that he was uh, roaming all over the place really trying to build up and teach and edify then moving on to the next place he really was um, having the heart of ministry that Jesus had but he was saying here that I want to come and see you if the Lord permit and that's why we should be we should always be thinking that if the Lord permits then we will make it there but, but um, sometimes these uh, visits aren't necessarily possible but that's okay because we entrust it to the Lord which is a good habit to have to entrust every single thing that we do to the Lord it says in verse 10 now if Timothy comes come see that ye may be with you without fear for he worketh the work of the Lord as I also do and this is a reference to um, chapter 4 verse 17 where Paul was saying that I will send unto you Timothy who is a teacher in the Lord and he uh, will come and remind you of the things that I previously taught he's of one accord with Paul and we're called to treat these teachers with respect which is what he was saying because these good teachers are extremely valuable verse 11 let no man therefore despise him but conduct him forth in peace that he may come to me for I look for him with the brethren so he's very valuable there's uh, other brethren that Paul needs and he's saying look after them you know he's he's a temporary possession if you want and uh, take all that you can from him I need him in the continuation of my own ministry in verse 15 halfway through um, I beseech you brethren ye know the house of Stephanus that is that it is the first fruits of Aquila and that he have addicted themselves to the ministry of the Saints that ye submit yourselves unto such 
and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. So anybody that uh, labours in the Lord, anybody that has helped, um, you know, and even we can give recommendations to these people as leaders, we should treat them with respect and uh, submit ourselves to them. We should listen to them. We shouldn't be arrogant. We shouldn't go our own way, but we should listen to the people that particularly work for the advancement of the kingdom. In verse 18, For they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore acknowledge ye them that are such. So people that refresh our spirit, we should acknowledge them that they are doing a work for the Lord. And it's one way that we can test their spirit. They should be edifying and building up the church. Um, and, but sometimes, you know, that is uncomfortable. If we have an evangelist speak to us and we're not into evangelism, then that will be uncomfortable. But as long as it's being built up for the good of the church and the advancement of Christ's kingdom, then we have to accept that it is edifying. Um, but of course we should still continue to use discernment but in general everybody should re refresh our soul really within the church because they should be demonstrating love as Paul was previously teaching you know without love we are nothing and with love it will always build up edify encourage and hope for the best in all of us in verse 19 the churches of Asia salute you Aquila and Pasquilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house and really there are um, that's an example I've spoken a lot about Aquila and Priscilla but um, you know they've got a church in their own house and they you know they were teachers they spent a lot of time with Paul they moved around and uh, they settled in Rome eventually and they came originally from Rome but there was uh, so much that they did with the Lord but yet they had their church in their house and the early church history tended to be that a lot of people would meet up in house groups. And I think that uh, house groups, again, are so powerful. Not only are they a representation of the early church, but actually they create tight-knitted communities where power can be demonstrated within the church and affect the community around them. House groups definitely should not be frowned upon by churches. And in fact, I believe that they should be encouraged and we see that particularly during this COVID-19 instance, where if you have a church that doesn't have close-knitted communities, um, little house groups or little small groups, then you end up in a situation where there is no power in the church because the church is in lockdown. And I think that we should really learn from this lesson, all of us, that uh, there is power in small groups, um, but obviously there are dangers with that as well. God bless you.